Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com. It's Monday, January 23rd. This is The Gateway. I'm Wayne Pratt. The cost of eggs is spiking. It's a ripple effect of the deadly bird flu that hit egg-laying flocks across the U.S. We lost 44 million laying hens last year because of avian influenza. We examine what is behind the high price of eggs in just a few minutes. As consumers cope with the rising cost of that grocery staple, they are also dealing with another jump in gas prices. Gas Buddy reports they have increased roughly 21 cents a gallon in the St. Louis area over the past week. The company surveys nearly 1,000 stations in the area. The average is $3.23, up nearly 46 cents from a month ago and around 12 cents from this time last year. Gas Buddy says prices in the Metro East range from $3.15 a gallon to $3.60. They are hovering around the $3.20 mark in Rolla, and prices run from about $3.20 to $3.60 a gallon in the Quincy area. St. Louis aldermen will vote this week on using American Rescue Plan Act funds to make it easier for drivers of emergency vehicles to navigate the city. St. Louis Public Radio's Rachel Littman reports. Signal preemption devices give emergency vehicles like ambulance or fire trucks the ability to change the traffic lights in their direction of travel to green. They are only used when the vehicles are running with lights and sirens. The bill from Alderman Joe Vaccaro spends $10 million of federal COVID relief money to install the systems throughout the city. He says it will save lives. The measure got unanimous first-round approval last week. The board will likely take a final vote on Friday to send it to Mayor Tashara Jones. Vaccaro says he hopes the systems will be in place by the end of the summer. I'm Rachel Lipman. St. Louis Public Radio. The Missouri Department of Transportation wants to make it less confusing for St. Louis residents to find their way along the I-64 corridor. MoDOT Area Transportation Engineer Jen Wade says residents are asking for improvements along that corridor between Jefferson and Kings Highway. Now, just not even being able to quantify how many interchanges are here is humorous, really. And it, it indicates there might be a lack of clarity as to how to use this interchange. The department is proposing better options for walking, public transit, bicycle, and auto traffic. A former state lawmaker and high-ranking St. Louis official has died. St. Louis Public Radio's Jason Rosenbaum has more on how South St. Louis politician Tom Villa made an impact on city politics. Villa had a storied political career that spanned five decades. He became a Democratic Missouri state lawmaker in the 1970s. He was the president of the Board of Aldermen in the 1990s and served on the board in the 2010s. He nearly became St. Louis's mayor and Missouri state treasurer, losing both contests narrowly. St. Louis collector of revenue Gregory FX Daily says Villa was never bitter about his losses, but rather inspired to work hard whenever he saw a chance to serve the city. One of the smartest people that I've been around had one of the greatest sense of humors that I've been around. Villa was 77 years old. I'm Jason Rosenbaum, St. Louis Public Radio. A judge in Illinois has granted a pause on a new law that bans assault weapons in the state. Mawa Iqbal has more. The ruling only applies to the over 800 plaintiffs, which include gun owners and firearm dealers, involved in the lawsuit. This means the plaintiffs can lawfully possess assault weapons without having to register them with the state, and the firearms dealers can legally sell weapons while the case gets hashed out in higher courts. The state's Democratic leaders aren't happy. In a statement, Governor J.B. Pritzker said the ruling was disappointing, yet this is the first step in defending the law. Attorney General Kwame Raoul's office said they will ask the appellate court to reverse and vacate the ruling. This lawsuit was brought by former Republican State Attorney General candidate Tom DeVore. It's one of three known legal challenges to the law since it was enacted earlier this month. I'm Mawa Iqbal. An initiative in Missouri is looking to destigmatize addiction and recovery in the workplace. The Recovery Friendly Workplaces Initiative's goal is to create strategies that promote employee safety, health, and support for managers and employees. Speaking on St. Louis on the Air, Initiative Director Ann McCauley 
says there are some concerns from employers about workers relapsing. But she also says she receives a lot of positive feedback. The majority of the companies that we have worked with have actually promoted the employees they've hired that are in recovery, and they say that those are the very best employees they have. The Missouri Health Association says roughly $12.5 billion is spent each year on addiction in the state. Consumers are used to seeing higher food prices at the grocery store. The Consumer Price Index shows egg prices in December were up almost 60 percent over the same time the previous year. Kendall Profit reports for Harvest Public Media on what's behind that increase. When you walk through the doors of the Sugar Shack Bakery in Sioux City, Iowa, you can smell the assortment of cakes and cookies on the shelf before you see them. All right, two uh, and two red velvet. And to make each sweet smelling treat possible, it takes a whopping 300 eggs every two to three days. Lately, that's meant a much higher bill for Claudia Hessa, the bakery's owner. She says she's been spending more than double on them. And she says she can't double or triple sales to make up for it. You just can't. It, you, you wouldn't, you'd be out of business. You'd be able to sell it. So it's like, yeah, what do you do? The average cost for a grade A large carton of eggs hit $4.25 last month, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. This time last year, it was less than half that. Egg prices have risen more than any other food product, according to the Consumer Price Index. It's the largest we've seen in any category for quite some time. That's Pat Westoff. He's the director of the Food and Agricultural Policy Research Institute at the University of Missouri. He says egg prices are typically more volatile than other food commodities. So it takes a pretty big increase in price to convince people not to buy quite as many eggs. So uh, a relatively modest percentage decline in production has resulted in a very large percentage increase in prices. Inflation has hit all food prices. That's because of supply chain disruptions, the war in Ukraine, and high labor wages. But the supply of eggs also shrank, and that really impacts cost. That's exactly what happened after a deadly bird flu hit egg layers, says analyst Maro Ibaburu of the Egg Industry Center. We lost 44 million laying hens last year because of avian influenza. So... That creates a reduction on the the number of eggs that can be produced. Avian influenza is deadly for entire flocks. When the virus is detected in one bird, federal law requires that all remaining birds be culled to keep the highly pathogenic virus from spreading. And 2022 marked one of the virus's deadliest outbreaks. New at noon, a disaster proclamation is issued for a county in northwest Iowa over the bird flu. The proclamation from Governor Kim Reynolds impacts... Last March, one of the country's biggest egg producers, Rembrandt Enterprises, had to call a flock of more than 5 million hens. The virus killed almost 15 million egg layers in just Iowa, which leads the nation in egg production. And major bird losses continued through September, right before winter, when eggs hit peak demand. The good news is that last month was likely the peak for prices as well. Iowa State University agricultural economist Lee Scholes says the USDA is forecasting better days. They do expect prices to decline some, maybe about 30 percent off these historically high levels in 2022 as we look at 2023 prices. That's if bird flu doesn't cause another disruption. Still, Scholz is hopeful. Buyers could be shelling out a little less next season. For Harvest Public Media, I'm Kendall Crawford. Harvest Public Media is a collaboration of newsrooms in the Midwest and Great Plains. The Gateway is a production of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt.
Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at ChooseWood.com.